like uh, Christmas out there today, isn't it, Hector? Well, it's, it's cold this morning. Yeah. We have a high of 58 or something like that, which for Florida... Yeah, that's, that's like bone different. chilling, that's okay? Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh. And of course, because it's Christmas, you're going to be talking about marketing. Yeah, okay. of course. What else? what else would you be talking about at Christmas? <laughs> I mean, how do you buy your toys on stuff, Santa? <laughs> Yeah, uh, the Santa now uses Amazon, I understand. That's right. He, he used the heck with the darn reindeer. He has a, the drone delivery yeah. system now, so he doesn't have to do that. Um, you know, before we get deep into the show, we want to make sure we, we tell you how to, you can call in. It's 213-943-3808. That's 213-943-3808. Of course, you'll be actually getting us live because we're, we're streaming live on Facebook right. right now. So if you uh, got so something to ask Santa, yeah, you know, you get your list. In. Um, you can also find us on workingtheweatherwind.com. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google+, uh, Blogger, YouTube, Pinterest, Instagram. And, and a just, partridge just, yeah, and a pear tree. tree. That's right, all over the place. Um, we want to thank Vibrant Life Health Center for being our sponsor all year. Uh, they have the coolest weight loss system, so if you're thinking about getting ready for the new year, get that bathing suit by March, Nutramost is the program for you. I mean, if you want to lose weight quickly and then keep it off, that's a product, amazing. I mean, I'm at eight months now, haven't gained yeah. a single pound, and I lost 34 pounds in 40 days. Yeah, you don't fit that Santa suit at all well anymore. As a matter of fact, even the pants that I bought after I lost the yeah. weight, I'm already sort of, <laughs> sort of getting a little loose on me here, so that's sort of cool. You got no one to stop, Hector. <laughs> it's it's an amazing program, and again, they also have, have that problem, right? Yeah, and they're also a great chiropractor. If you want to have, you got aches and pains or any of the kinds of things, or if you have just weird stuff that's going on. They're really good at helping you with nutrition and supplements and all that other kind of stuff. So check out vibrantlifehealthcenter.com. Um, and also their show, which is on Thursday, right here on Blog Talk Radio, uh, called Life in Balance. I mean, it's a really great show. Lots of really good information about natural health and alternative health and medicine and all those mm -hmm. kinds of things. Um, today's show, it's, it's interesting in that because, again, I was a science major in college. Right. And... I was also studying biology, which is one of the, the social sciences, if you will. Mm -hmm. And we, when we talk about science, we think about physics and mathematics and all. Those are what we call the hard sciences. Mm -hmm. The social sciences... They're the soft and fluffy ones. Not so much, <laughs> <laughs> if you will. So when, when, when I'm talking about the physics right. of marketing, right. I'm sort of being a little bit facetious because, right. again, physics is a hard science. Right. And marketing, if you want to call it a science, it's a social science. Um, and really, there's really not a lot of hold hard and fast rules, although there are some principles that you sort of had to adhere to. For example, there's always been the hard and fast rule, take care of the customer, that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. There was a book written not too long ago called The 22 Immutable Rules of Marketing. Okay. And for the most part, anybody in marketing, if you ever studied marketing in college, or whatever, that's one of the things you study. Yeah, I slept through that. Yeah. And, and here's one of, the, one of the rules they always said, you know, the first company to gain market share on a, on a word, a keyword or whatever, keeps it. And for you to try and go after it is stupid, mm -hmm. okay? You know, companies who come after the fact just are not going to take over and, and get that position. So if I come up with Google, I'm not going right. to really make right. Google sweat. Right. Right. Well, it's okay. But here's the thing. A lot of those, those immutable rules are not so immutable. And I'll give right. you an example. Um, Apple did not invent the MP3 player. Mm. They came in four or five years afterwards. Right. But they had the number one MP3 player mm -hmm. pretty quickly. They were not what the first with a smartphone. Right. They were way after everybody else, but they had a better product. Mm -hmm. So it used to be, it said, that once you capture market share on a word, it doesn't matter whether you got a better product or not. You're mm -hmm. just not going to win that battle. Well, that's no longer true. Right. If you got a better product, you can win the battle today because what has changed in marketing is social media. Right. Today, the emperor wears no clothes. You could say you're great. You can have the best damn marketing message in the world. But if it's a big fat lie. Right. Then that's going to get out very quickly. Yeah. I mean, you can't lie to the public anymore. And you can't even hyperbolize. Right. <laughs> if you will. Remember uh, when Windows 95 came out, Microsoft was the best damn thing since the white rice or whatever. You right. know, And they had like 169 flaws in it that they had to patch within six months. Right. And a lot of things in marketing have always been overhyped. Right. It's the greatest this, it's the greatest that, it's best this, it's the best of 2016, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But you can't do that anymore. And that is changing those immutable rules of marketing. 
Okay, so, so so now they're mutable. Well, they're mutable rules. <laughs> so when I wrote mine, I didn't try and go off and, and play off of those 20, 22 rules. What right. I try and look at is what's an evergreen article, first of all. Right. I want it to be so it doesn't, like, at the end of 2016, you throw it away. I wanted it to be a, a thing that what people would think about it. So I thought about, you know, what are the rules of physics that pretty much everybody understands right. and, New, and that they, laws, right. we know don't right. change. All right. Newton's laws, the laws of motion. Well, yeah, the, lo the laws of motion. Like, so the first law of thermodynamics actually is, you know, when you put something in motion, mm -hmm. it stays in motion unless it's acted upon by something else. Right. Okay? Um, the people know about the law of, Action and reaction. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a, those are two mm -hmm. very common laws. Right, of new. Right. And I talk about the four real common ones. And I talk about one called the law of entropy. Mm -hmm. and a lot of people may have not have heard of that, but the, the essentially the law of entropy says that nothing is static. Right. That if you don't put energy into it, mm -hmm. it essentially essentially goes away, disintegrates, mm -hmm. stops working, whatever. And that's chaos I mean, theory comes into play. Yeah, it, it makes <laughs> common sense. Okay, the sun ain't gonna burn forever. Right. That type of thing. All right. So when I wrote the, the, this article, I, I sort of looked at those kinds of things and said, you know, what are some of the things that really people sort of need to look at that would be the first four laws that really you can't really do without? So the first one I put in here, the first law of marketing has to do with making things happen. Right. So the, here's it's sort of a common yeah. sense. If you do do nothing, yeah, the, the what old, happens? The old field of dreams thing, right? right? Build it and they will come. Right. Eh, wrong. Right. <laughs> if you do nothing. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Right. That's the law. Okay, <laughs> if you do something, a very small thing will happen. If you do a lot of little somethings, a lot of little things will happen. And if you do a big thing, bigger things happen, and right. so on. Now, they're not all proportional, and they're not all good. Right. So you can do a big thing, and you make a big, nasty, bad splash. Right, which, which is even happening <laughs> to some big companies, right? right? right. I mean, we all remember Vista, right? Right, all right. So there's a lot of things that, that you can do. you got to do not only a lot. Windows well, eight. you have to do it right. Yeah. Okay? So that that, in, that incorporates a lot of different things. So at the end of the article, I, I go over to over a dozen other things that right. you really sort of have to pay attention to. But that's that's a sort of a common sense type of thing. But you know how many people violate that first law? Most of them. Most people. <laughs> you know, I look at a lot of people who are... See, yeah, I know how to play this game. <laughs> a lot of people do word of mouth marketing. Right. But even that... that they break that law. They don't do that right. They'll go out there and instead of doing word of mouth marketing, they go out and do word of mouth selling. Sales, right. Yeah. They're not doing marketing. Right. They're just badgering people. They're going out and trying to sell people directly. That's not word hey, of mouth marketing. Hey, hey, buy one yeah. of these? Buy one of these? Uh, no. <laughs> no, I need to go get a drink over here. I need to go to the bathroom. I'm sorry. I got a lobotomy scheduled in about 30 <laughs> minutes. I got to go. <laughs> yeah. You know, so again, the first law of marketing is if you do good marketing consistently, yeah. it's gonna it's gonna make a difference. If you do bad marketing consistently, it's gonna have bad effects on you. If you do nothing, nothing will happen. Right. And, you, know, and you can't just talk the talk. You gotta walk. And the it's walk also away. you can have a great product, right. but if you don't market it, nothing's gonna happen. Right. And you can't just say it's great. Right. No, you gotta <laughs> prove it's great. Yeah. So if you have a really good market and you want to beat those immutable rules that we talked about in the beginning. You got to prove that it's better than whoever's number one or number two or number three or mm -hmm. number four. You got to go head to head with those guys, right. and you got to show yours. I remember one time, not very long ago, they would get an Apple iPhone and stick it in water, and then they get the Samsung and stick it in water, and then they shake them up and they see which one worked and all that kind of stuff. I saw a guy sticking them in blenders and stuff. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> okay. Hey, it's it, damn, it's too. I love oh, those. It doesn't work. I'm I love sorry. those smartphone <laughs> smoothies, man. Uh, so that's that's the first law. The second law. Marketing has to do with effort. Right. So if you're engaged in marketing, you want better results, you have to apply time, effort, expense, energy, money. You have to apply energy to keep something going. Mm -hmm. That was one of the things I see people do, and you know they don't do that. One of the things that you really should be doing in that is research. Most people skip. That's another piece of the, of the energy that you have to put in. Right. Most people skip the research, even if they do a pay-per-click. Yeah. They don't do any research. They just jump into pay-per-click and say, yeah, right. here's a message. We're going to knock it out. Well, here, here's another thing, too, because it's like, you know, again, you can't just do a little bit of effort. You have to do, the, you, know, you have to go all the way. Because how many times do we see people online and it's like, oh, I got a website. It's like, so? <laughs> <laughs> Especially today. You know, the website's kind of like the tail that wags the dog. It's getting less and less important as time goes on. Well, well not only that. I mean, you have a website. Well, there's like a, right. a trillion of them damn right. things out there. You know, the, 
How do people find you? Well, uh, they're looking for my specific needle. Or they'll say, well, they typed in my name. Well, how they don't know your name? Right, exactly. <laughs> right, that's, that's the whole point of having a website is so people can find you that don't know you. And then how do you know your website's performing right. well? Well, half the people never put analytics on their website. Yeah. So they don't know how many visitors right. they have or anything stuff like that. And to take it to the next level, they really ought to build two or three websites, or at least landing pages, right. if not websites, and then see how they perform. Does this one perform better? Sure. Does, you know, the images are better? You know, offers. People like them. What kind of offers you have? Right. You know, are they filling up? What kind of forms are you using? I mean, yeah. it's not just, you can have four or five different kind of forms. What are you asking for? Are you making them jump through too many hoops? Right. Are you making them jump through too many links? A common thing I'll see people, how many times people will click on something before they get to whatever it is right. they want? Yeah, and a lot of times, you know, we'll talk to people and say, well, I'm already, I'm already on page one, so how many sales are you making? Because right. again, that's the online side of it. There's also the marketing side of it, right? right? Because if your offer's lame or if they get to the site and it's all over the place, you're pretty much just spinning your wheels. Right. Well, here, here's another Unless thing. Unless that's what you have so, in mind. So when you, when you think about the second law, the law has to do with action and reaction. Mm -hmm. So you, if you're pushing something, right. you know, and say you, say you have a great message mm -hmm. and it takes off and people are buying your stuff like it's going out of style. What's going to be one of the reactions that happens? The bad guys are going to copy you. That's right. So say you decide to make your stuff in China within a, six months. Chinese are making your stuff. And yeah, or even just doing marketing. You know, if you hit something and you hit a home run, it's not going to be long before your competitor is going to figure right. it out and start doing the same thing and try to beat your off. I'll, I'll give you a real good example. So Yetis mm -hmm. are the big deal. Right. Everybody and their brother trying to buy Yetis, which is really funny because Yeti didn't invent that. Mm -hmm. There's another immutable thing. Mm -hmm. They actually are way late to that game. I mean, right. Stanley and all these other guys mm -hmm. have had, you know, thermoses that keep stuff hot for days and stuff right. go for... I mean, that's not a new thing. Mm -hmm. But Yeti made that, like, they they right. own that. Right. You own a Yeti, I mean, it'll keep the ice good for 28 hours or whatever. Right. Which is nothing because any of these Stanley products right. or the Pasco, they all do that. But now, all the Chinese guys are making fake Yetis. Mm-hmm. Okay, because again, it's not something that's easy to patent because it's been around forever. Right. A double-walled cup is right. not something new. How can you, How many different kinds of caps can you yeah. have? All you got to do is make yours two inches lower than theirs, and now yeah. it looks different. So now, there was a big thing on TV the other day about, you know, the fake Yetis coming into town. But you don't even have to have fake Yetis. You go to Walmart, there's a ton of Yeti look-alike, act-alike. Right. Type products out there. Yeah, well, it's like look at some of the people that'll spend, you know, an arm and a leg to have a Mercedes Benz. You know, just because they want that name, it doesn't necessarily mean right. that the car does anything more than you know my Hyundai does. But right. they're willing to spend or, an extra or twenty, thirty thousand dollars right. on it. You know, and, and again, I buy, I like the Korean vehicles because they have a ten-year warranty, right. bumper to bumper right. for the most part. I mean, it don't cover batteries or tires mm -hmm. or things like that, but it covers pretty much right. damn everything else. And why can't an American car have that? Right. I mean, again, if you want to sell a hell of American cars, you got to give people value. Today, mm -hmm. one of the immutable laws right. is people buy value, right. and the highest value wins. Now, as long as their marketing message says, hey, we can show you we have, not that we say, right. we can show you we have the best value, that makes a big deal. Right. Here's another really good example of this action and reaction. So you're doing pay-per-click. Mm -hmm. And you bid it out, and you're getting on page one, and it's working, and all of a sudden, you notice that you're sliding. You're not getting as many. Right. What's happening is two things. One, Google's monkeying with it. Right. <laughs> That's another. You get a lot more bot traffic. Right. And, and, and they're jacking up the price, right. two cents a day, yeah. you know, that kind of stuff, which I see. Every, it makes me sort of crazy when they do But the other thing you see is the, comp the competition is reacting right. to what you're doing. Okay, so now you have competition that you didn't have before mm -hmm. because they realize that your message is playing and so they're going to copy your message. Not only are they going to copy your message, they're going to copy your name and say, if somebody types in ABC right. and that's your it'll, company right, name, pop up. you're going to pop up. They're mm -hmm. going to pop up. Right. So those kinds of things, again, it's an action and reaction type of deal. And that's, that's something that you've got to really understand because if you don't, you're going to think you're... you're, you're Flying high, and then all of a sudden you get shot down by the you know the shotgun of the competition, right. if you will. Um, the last one of my three was the law of entropy, and that gets back to doing nothing. You know, a lot of people. We've had a lot of clients that we did really really good work for them. We got them on page one, mm -hmm. where we're getting good conversion, all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff, and then things change, and then they'll stop. Right. And invariably, what will happen is when they stop, 
they fall completely off, off of wherever place, they yeah. were. So we have a, a methodology, for example, for blogging. We can get clients a lot of page views very quickly. I mean, I, I, I meet with a lot of people regularly. Mm -hmm. Our blogs that we work with clients generally have two to three times the page views of websites. Mm -hmm. oh, absolutely. Okay. And, and, and actually, they're, they're, they're better readers, too, right. because... You know, when somebody finds you on the internet, you're not the only company they're looking at. They usually look at everybody at least above the fold. Right. But when they're on your blog, they're reading your blog, but you can you. have all your ads and all mm -hmm. that stuff. It's all you all the time. So it's it's a much better way to bring people in. It's a more of a pull technology right. than you're trying to push technology. And guess what? We can do that without pay per click. Mm -hmm. Now, if you add pay per click to it, it puts it on steroids. So if you put it in pay per click on Facebook or right. Twitter or Google or whatever, it can really make a big deal for you. But here's the thing. If you stop, the law of entropy takes hold. Right. <laughs> so Very I've seen quickly. people that were on page one with spades. I mean, nobody could kick their butt. And we stopped. And within three months, they you couldn't find them. Right. And then you got to start all over again. Right. You know, I tell people, you know what online marketing is really very similar to? Pushing a boulder. The boulder rolls uphill slowly, right. rolls downhill real fast. Right. You know, so if you don't keep pushing that boulder up that hill, where's it going to go? Right. right over you. It's going to disappear. So those are, those are my big four that I thought yeah. people ought to really pay attention to. Now, I came up with a whole bunch of other ones. And, again, these are based on our, you know, many years of marketing experience mm -hmm. that we have. And they're not just mine. They're both mine and Carl's. Um, the first one that I talk about, which is social media, is all about the audience. Mm -hmm. And I've said this many times. I mean, people don't buy, right. don't join Facebook or Twitter or anything to be sold anything. Mm -hmm. They join because they want to get information, they want to contact their friends mm -hmm. and family. They they they're looking for useful stuff. They want right. to they want to, you know, suck brain suck you, you know? Right. They want to they want to get your information, that kind of thing. But that's the game. You have to understand that it's right. all about them. And if you try and make it all about you, it ain't going to work very well. So that's one of my I think that's a really hard fast rule. I don't see that changing anytime in the next 50 years. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I can say that that was one of the ones that I first came up with a long time ago. Um, this was sort of a no-brainer. Uh, there's no substitute for getting started. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I see a lot of people say, gee, I've got to get more sales. What are you going to do? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, you got to get started. I, I, need this, I need that magic wand. Yeah. Right. Yeah, the, the people want, they think that there's magic, and, yeah. but there's no magic. you right. got to get out. It's hard work. Right. you got to get out there and do stuff. And... A lot of people are paralyzed by they got to have it perfect. Yeah, and, and there's the no, no such animal. Yeah, there ain't no such. As a matter of fact, everything is evolving. So even yeah. if you came up with the perfect thing yeah. today, tomorrow it's not so perfect. Yeah. So getting started is a big deal, and then committing yourself to learning lots of different things is a right. big deal. I mean, most people don't do that, but that's what you got to do. Well, well and, and that's the reason why so many marketing plans blow up in their face because they're they're not tracking, they're right. not testing and measuring. Right. You know, they just think they have the you know, latest, greatest guy to have, and they can put it out there, and, you know, people are going to beat a path through their door, and guess what? It doesn't work that way. In fact, it never worked that right. way. You can think about it. It's sort of like a very competitive sports game, yeah. football, whatever. I mean, if the two teams are really close, yeah. you come through there with a game plan. Yeah. You start executing the game plan. Right. you got to be willing to throw the game plan right the, the hell out the window, window yeah. if it ain't working. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the way marketing is. you you got to go in there understanding that you got a game plan, You've researched the game plan, but you may be way wrong. Right. And you got to be willing to go in there and do whatever it takes and, to and make it right. And that's important because, you know, a lot of people, instead of fixing the problem, they defend the problem, right. and that's counterproductive. Right. Because that'll waste a lot more of your time and money than just about anything else. Yeah. Uh, if somebody you tried it, it same, didn't work, yeah. move on. Here's a, most, one of the most common things you'll hear. We're on page one. So? I'm not getting any calls. There you go. <laughs> well, what do you got to do? <laughs> Well, I don't know. That's what I'm paying you. And what we usually tell them is, well, your offer sucks. They said, no, it ain't. It's, it's, it's this. It's good. Well, then why aren't the fish biting? Oh, exactly, because that's what I explain to people. <laughs> if, you like to, if, you, if you are into fishing, okay, it's the fish that ultimately decide right. what they're going to nibble on. If they don't like that bait, you got to change bait. There's, there's no way you can convince that fish right. that it really wants that worm. Yeah. <laughs> If don't they, you really want that? If no, they, I don't want if that they don't worm. like your offer, right. it's not a compelling offer right. to them. So if you're on page one and you're not getting any business, right. 
Change your, your offer. Your offer sucks. I mean, you have to change it. Seven. And how do you know whether that's working or not? You do your due diligence. Right. You do your research. That's one of the golden rules. If you're not doing the research to figure out what the hell's right. going on, you, you're going to shoot yourself in the leg. Um, here's the next one. There's no substitute for quality. So if you're a blogger, mm -hmm. if you're an advertiser, mm -hmm. if you're a videographer, I don't care what the heck you right. are, there's no substitute for quality. You only get one shot at a right. first impression. Right. So you want to make sure that you want to be able to do it as best you can. One of the things we try and do is every mm -hmm. year, how can we improve what we're doing? Right. How do I mean, we're, we're doing the, the live Facebook stream. This is a new experiment that we're trying with to see how it works. We're going to do some research with it along that to right. see how it works. And again, we're, we're shooting with the highest resolution cameras that they tell us to use with and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. Doesn't mean we can't do better. We will try. But there's no substitute for quality. Our blogs have improved radically over the last six years. The same way with the radio show. Well, the point is, if you do it long enough, you get good at it. But right. That's a problem for a lot of business people. You, you know? got to get started. You got to do the research. They're always looking for the next shiny thing. You and know, you got to practice. With it. You know, and you never get good at anything if you don't do it. And blogging is really in that arena. You know, how are you going to get good at blogging? Because right. today, really, the websites are kind of lame today. Because yeah. once you set up a website, it never changes for three years. So why was if somebody finds it? Why would they want to come back? There's right. nothing compelling to bring them back. Yeah. A blog can do that. Yeah. A blog I, can change every week. I was I was talking to a meeting today. We were talking about yeah. traffic and all that kind yeah. of stuff. And I said, look, if you want to increase traffic, you got to give people a reason to come. Right. So what are you giving them that's useful? That's changing every week. Yeah. That's that's giving them a reason to come back. If you're not giving them that, why in the hell should they come back? Right. You could say I got all this goodies and that goodies and what. So what? Well, and the other I mean, thing, too, is sometimes time is precious. some business people make it very difficult for somebody to take you up on your offer. If I have to click 14 times or i got to fill out a you know right. a form that long to get your good gimme, guess what? I don't want it. Right. <laughs> if i got to give you all my personal information, right. who my, my mother-in-law's name Blood is. Blood type, on, yeah. That ain't going to happen. I mean, generally, we ask for the name, the phone number, and an email address. And a lot of times we even make the phone number And that's optional in many cases, right. right. Because, again, we just want to be able to contact them in some way, shape, or form. We want to put the hook in the fish. We don't necessarily want to drag the fish right, into right. the boat yet. Yeah. So, again, the, the harder you make it, the, the less likely that you're going to see some kind of thing. Um, you want to make it easy for them to buy. And that has to do with number of clicks and so on. So a lot of times you'll see click, click, it says click buy. And it brings up another page and starts giving them more information. Right. They just clicked buy. Right. They want to buy now. They don't want to get more information. Right. <laughs> You give them what they want, right? <laughs> I mean, I've seen sometimes a buy takes four or five clicks. That's crazy. Yeah, and again, I understand after, you got two clicks, they're gone. Right, for the most part, you got to capture their financial information if you're going to buy. All mm -hmm. right, I understand all that, but you want it that within two clicks, they better be filling out that credit card form mm -hmm. or whatever. Or you're missing or, the boat. Or, you, or they're liable to, to throw the hook and go somewhere mm -hmm. else. Um, Take provide a provide a compelling offer mm -hmm. now. Here's a simple question you should always ask yourself. How do you know if it's compelling? How many people take you up on it? Yeah. If, if nobody's <laughs> taking you up on it... It's not compelling. Eh, yeah. Nobody not compelling think it's compelling, though. but the fish don't. Right. If, if they're not filling out the form or picking up the phone, it's not compelling. Right. You may think it's compelling. I'm giving you 20% off. No, well, my your competitor is giving them 25% off. Sorry. Not compelling. You have to give them a really compelling offer, and only the fish can determine if that's good bait yeah. or if that's something that they don't want to eat. Right. And you also want to take the risk out of right. pork dealing with you, too. Yeah. A, here, a simple way to take the risk out is, you know, 30-day money-back guarantee. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people say, well, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. Well, that takes the risk out of the transaction. Right. How many people are going to come back to you? within 30 days and said your product sucked. Now, if your product's good, it shouldn't be a problem. Right. Okay? There are companies on, on eBay that I, I see all the time, and they sell these little headphone thingies. Mm -hmm. And most of them have a 30-day money-back guarantee because most of them break at 35 <laughs> days. Yeah, there you go. Okay? <laughs> they got the chip in there. They can figure this stuff out. <laughs> so they've tracked how many days right. before their stuff right. normally breaks because it's the cheap Chinese stuff. Um, some of them have a 60-day. Theirs is a little better. Mm -hmm. Okay? But, again, if you take the risk out of the transaction, the likelihood of people buying is much higher. Um, make your company accessible. That means just put your website address on everything all over the place. 
and interconnect all your things. Yeah, you and know, also make Facebook sure you've got a physical that. address, phone number. You know, make sure they believe that you're for real. Because again, right. www means Wild Wild West is Scam Central. You got to make sure that they know you're not a scam. So they have you know a little map that shows you what your address is and how to get to you and all. Because I saw I was talking to one company and they're actually they have good covers on page one, but when you go to their website, it's all stock images. There's n there's no physical address. Right. I mean, it's like you 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 just put this you know Scam Central uh, sticker on your site. Yeah. Next one is like, if you're not blogging, we already mentioned the right. blog. Right. Blog weekly. Blog a lot. Blog, do good blogs. Quality blogs. <laughs> Useful stuff. Right. Uh, on the social nets, publish daily. Yeah. You should be posting at least once a day. Right. Um, you can post more than that if you're producing good stuff. Always take care of the customer. If somebody calls you up and says, hey, uh, something sucked, I hate it. Take care of them. It's much cheaper to take care of them than to get bad press. Mm -hmm. One bad press is going to kill 10 good transactions, yep. if not more. I mean, there have been some studies that said one bad press equals 57 more. Right. Whereas one good press equals maybe one or two yep. more. So take care of them customers. If they're having a problem, give them a reason, you know, to say something to, nice. To say something nice. Mm -hmm. You took care of them. Yeah. It takes them to the next level. Uh, and that gets to the last couple of them, which have to do with, you know, you want people saying good things about you? Give them a good reason to give, mm -hmm. say good things about you. Obviously, take care of the customer. That's right. But give them incentives. You can give them incentives. You can ask them right. to say nice things about you. You can't get that to happen if you're not taking care of them. That, I can assure you. Right. If you're not giving them a good product or good service, that ain't going to happen. Yeah. But asking them is also a big deal. And then make it fun. You can have contests where they win stuff. People love to win stuff. Right. And if you do all those kinds of things, it's going to really sort of make your life a lot easier. Mm -hmm. We're near the end of the program. We want to talk about the worldwide weirds. Uh, well, you know, we're coming up on, on Christmas. You know, what do you, what do you give the man that has everything? And Elon Musk would certainly be one of those. So you know what he's got for under his tree this Christmas? A tunnel boring machine. I was going to say, it looks like a couple yeah. of rocket ships. He's gotten, he's gotten <laughs> so uh, put off by, by, you know, the traffic snarls and everything that he's literally going to start tunneling under towns to build more roads. More roads. So Yeah. He says, you know, we need more roads and we need less traffic, so we'll we'll build. This thing looks like huge. I mean, oh, I've yeah. seen that. The, yeah, the these are the ones that they, 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 I mean, they literally, these are the ones that, like they dug the tunnel with and yeah. stuff like that, you know. And I mean, literally, you build these things underground. You have to take them apart, build them underground. And, and well, then that's they, how they build the England to France tunnel, yeah, the tunnel whatever. Right, yeah, yeah. Uh, among other things, you know. And, and like I said, he's going to start, that's what he wants for, for his Christmas present. Apparently he's got it already. Here's another one I thought was kind of interesting. It says, in the future, you might work in an inflatable office. Because, again, you know, one of the things that, that they're having problems, particularly in places like California, is affordable office space. Right. So, literally, there are companies now that are making offices that, literally, you put this thing on the ground and you pump it up. And it's, it's an inflatable and they made cell. out of Kevlar and stuff? I well, yeah. I mean, they, they can take the, the elements. I mean, you know, you got to realize today you're in camping. I mean, some of these right. things are pretty tough. You know, and but well, now the bullets will go through my tent. Right. No problem, so. Well, it'll be bulletproof. And but bears, I mean, bears could go through my tent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you don't see too many bears in L.A. You don't see any in Florida yeah. either, as far as that goes. But well, I just thought that was kind of an interesting thing. And, and here's what I, I thought you'd get appreciate. You know, you're a golfer, right? And and you know, you know, the, some of these people like down here, you can pretty much golf year round. But but like in other places up north, you really can't. But yet you still got people that'll go out and play golf in the winter, right? Mm -hmm. And they go out the black golf balls and stuff right. like that when they're hitting on snow. Well, this is a guy who decided to play out of the water hazard because it was frozen over. The problem was he screwed up. Not only did he, he miss the ball. He broke the ice. He broke through the ice and fell in. <laughs> so then not only did he have to take the drop, but he had to take the stroke, too. And he had to take and get dry clothes. Right. Yeah, he had to go back to the, the clubhouse to get changed. Yeah, they make simulators. So you could you could go in your house and, and play golf if you wanted to. You don't have to go out and do this. I know we only got a few minutes left in the show. Uh, next week's show is going to be about, you know, a review for the year. All the things that we've been going on. 2016 has been a roller coaster year. Lots of, lots of crazy happening from the election to Google and so on. And we're going to talk about all those things. We're going to talk about the shows and how we measure and look at things. Because our blog did phenomenal this year. We broke a million paid views yeah. in like April or something and, like that. And, and through the magic of technology, mm -hmm. we've actually already done the show. Yeah. So it'll Hector be... Hector is not really here. It'll be pre-recorded, so you won't be able to call <laughs> us next week. So, Other than that, uh, I think make sure if you're a Club WQ member, you go to the Dropbox. If you're a listener, uh, go to the notes page. There's lots of really good links there right. on lots of different subjects. Yeah. Um, and uh, definitely patronize... Uh, 
Harbor Life Health Center. They're they're really a great company. If you really got aches and pains or you really want to shed a bunch of weight, these guys can make you happy. You will be glad that you went there. And have a happy and safe holiday uh, season, and uh, don't play out of the frozen water hazard. Merry Christmas, guys. Keep working the web doing, gang. See you next year.